we are about to commence. May I ask Jordan to join me up here and ask you all to rise for the singing of the national anthem. You are asked to sing along with us. Eternal Father, bless our land. Guide us with thy mighty hand. Keep us free from evil powers. Be your light through countless hours. To our leaders, great defenders, grant true wisdom from above. Justice, truth be ours forever, Jamaica land we love. Jamaica, Jamaica, Jamaica land we love. Teach us to respect for all. Stern response to duty's call. Strengthen us the weak to cherish. Give us vision lest we perish. Knowledge sends us, Heavenly Father, grant true wisdom from above. Justice, truth be ours forever, Jamaica land we love. Jamaica, Jamaica, Jamaica land we love. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. I now invite Reverend Father Garth Minot, Anglican Chaplain to the University of the West Indies, to do the invocation. I begin with a brief excerpt from a book entitled Call to Teach. And this is a very brief reflection on a hymn written by Charles Wesley in 1749. Two verses of the hymn goes like this, and I won't sing it. <laughs> Forth in thy name, O Lord, we go, our daily labors to pursue. Thee, only thee, resolve to know in all we think or speak or do. The task thy wisdom hath assigned, O let me cheerfully fulfill. In all my works, thy presence find and prove thy good and perfect will. These two verses of a hymn penned by Charles Wesley are, an appropriate, are appropriate today as they were over 250 years ago. They speak of the attitude that we should have as we prepare to face our daily work. We start by assuming the correct posture, recognizing that we are stepping out in the power of God's name to pursue our task of molding minds. As we perform these tasks, we are making the resolve that God should be the foremost in all we think or speak or do. If that is our resolve, then there is no way that anything we'd, we do will go drastically wrong because God is in total control. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening hour asking your blessing and help as we are gathered together. We pray for guidance in the matters at hand 
and ask that you would clearly show us how to conduct our work with a spirit of joy and enthusiasm. Give us the desire to find ways to excel in our work, especially for those of us who teach. Help us to work together. Encourage each other towards excellence in work and character, and to challenge each other to reach for higher heights and to be the best we can. Father God, we ask you from the wealth of your glory to give us power through your spirit that we may be strong in our inner selves and that Christ will make his home in our hearts. We pray that we may have roots and foundations in love so that with all God's people we may have the power to understand how broad and long and high and deep is the love of God for us. May we come to know God's love and so be completely filled with God's nature. Help us to see and know our activities, especially in our teaching and learning, are the outworking of your power among us. Help us in our use of technology, not to use them as if they are ends in themselves, but to see them as means to advance the welfare of the whole human race confident that the gift of teaching and learning is your way to teach us to love one another. Help us to accept our responsibility as stewards of your great bounties. Make us ever mindful of the needs of others and help us to work towards the transformation of society and people's lives so that the world may become a place of justice, peace, joy, and righteousness. We ask these things in the name of Jesus who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We thank Reverend Father Minot for reminding us that in everything we should seek the Lord's blessings, a truly inspiring way to begin, begin this event. Deputy Principal UWI Mona Campus, Professor Ishan Kumba Kawa, Campus Registrar UWI Mona Campus, Dr. Camille Bell Hutchinson, President of Guardian Life Limited, Mr. Eric Hossein, our distinguished guest speaker, Dr. David Yearwood, and his lovely wife, Dr. Joanne Yearwood, members of the executive and management teams of Guardian Life, heads of departments of the UWI faculty and other tertiary institutions, other distinguished guests, friends, and corporate partners of you, faculty, staff and students, ladies and gentlemen all, good evening. Welcome to the 10th staging of the UWI GLL, Guardian Life Limited, that is, Premium Teaching Lecture Series. It is my pleasure to be your facilitator this evening. My role is to ensure that you have a background to this evening's event, especially for those who may be attending for the first time and to ensure that the program moves smoothly and on schedule. So I'm gonna ask for your full cooperation and your undivided attention as we spend the next hour and a half together. Before I give the background to this evening's function, I wish to extend apologies on behalf of the following persons who are unavoidably absent. Professor Archibald MacDonald, Principal UWI Mona Campus. Professor E. Nigel Harris, Vice Chancellor UWI. Dr. Swithin Wilmot, 
Dean of the Faculty of Humanities and Education. Professor Peter Figueroa, Senior Professor of Epidemiology, and Dr. Winston Adams, President of the University College of the Caribbean. I guess they'll be told what they would have missed tonight. Now to the brief background, and very, very brief. This marks the 10th year of a unique partnership between the University of the West Indies and Guardian Life Limited. UWI Guardian Life Premium, premium Teaching Lecture alternates yearly with a premium teaching award aimed at enhancing the teaching process at the university while at the same time recognizing the outstanding accomplishments of the academic staff. And that's the brief background. The evening promises to be an informative and fulfilling one, so we move straight into the program. At this time, I call on Professor Ishen Kumba Kawa, Deputy Principal of the University of the West Indies Mona Campus, to bring greetings on behalf of the Principal of the University. Professor Kawa? Let us welcome him, please. Um, uh, Master of Ceremonies, uh, thank you very much for pronouncing my name very well indeed, uh, because frequently, you know, it can be a little, you know, tongue twister. Uh, Mr. David Yearwood and your lovely wife, um, President Eric Hossen, uh, Dr. Camille Bell Hutchinson, Mrs. Sharon Fong Kong Foran, Executive Management Team, uh, Guardian Life Limited, and uh, representatives from tertiary institutions, and special recognition to the director of uh, the Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning. First of all, let me give apologies from Professor Archibald McDonald, who has asked me to stand in for him. Uh, he is unavoidably uh, absent, he's traveling on university um, uh, business, uh, but he's very much aware uh, of the accomplishments of this series of lectures and awards, and he would have liked to be here, uh, but uh, he sent um, his greetings that I'm delivering. As a deputy principal and former dean of the Faculty of Science and Technology, and before then the Faculty of Free and Applied Sciences, this lecture tonight, uh, gives me tremendous pleasure, pleasure and resonates with me you know, quite well. The lecture entitled, A Learner-Centered Perspective to Teaching and Learning with Technology, the 21st Century Difference. I have, I can relate to it. I'm a chemistry teacher and I, my favorite lecture used to be uh, symmetry. Uh, those of you who have done chemistry would, have, would, uh, would, would recall uh, what a monster uh, that subject you know, was. Uh, simply because you had to um, do a lot of imaginary stuff, you know, flipping things around and looking, looking at relationships, etc., etc. This was difficult to put across. Then came the world of visualization, where computers with computers, we are able to take an object and flip around and turn it on its head, and so, et cetera, et cetera. So we can see the difference and the similarities between a variety uh, of corners of the same shape. And that took us away from using stools to explain what a, a, a C4 rotation you know, is when you spin the stool four times. You know, each corner goes into the other corner. Easier to say now, but uh, in those days, it was extremely difficult to put across to students. Worse, if you have a car, a plane, a building, and so on and so forth. So the world of visualization has actually, or other technology, has actually helped us a great deal. And it is good to see uh, that a number of our lecturers, uh, I, I mentioned in particular Professor Lancashire in the Department of Chemistry, have actually taken this and uh, developing spectral visualization uh, techniques uh, that are used or the, the, the world over. So our teaching has been revolutionized a great deal. So that gone are the days in which our students and teachers are forced to rely heavily on pen and paper in the limited confines of a physical book 
for gathering relevant research and information uh, on a particular topic. Today's academic experience employs the use of smart boards uh, to teach tablets to read, PCs to prepare and distribute documents, and the World Wide Web to gain knowledge, gather information, explore issues and concepts at an international level. Technology has become part have become, has become an integral part of our daily lives, and with us, we are thus pleased uh, that for us as a learning tertiary, a tertiary learning institution, we emphasize and incorporate technology in carrying out our core functions of teaching, research, uh, and uh, public service. And indeed, the rebranding of the Instruction Development Unit to a center for excellence in teaching and learning, emphasizing the strategic trajectory the university is taking uh, with respect to teaching. And I'm particularly delighted to welcome Dr. David Yearwood uh, to the university and thank him for agree agreeing to present uh, today's lecture. As a regional university, while contributing to the world, it is important that we learn from the world, especially from the, the diaspora. Information sharing being extremely important uh, in today's world. Dr. Yearwood, we salute your very important work in St. Vincent and Grenadines, for which you have sourced uh, many computers uh, to support education there. The government of uh, St. Vincent and Grenadines, we understand, is making notable strides in integrating ICT in the government services, businesses, engaging and engaging science generally to improve the economy. Your work there, which is soon to be introduced into Jamaica, uh, is very important to us. And the importance of all of this is, becomes evident when you look at how, what we have done uh, as a country and as a region to um, incorporate science and technology in our development. We are, it is sad that we are now nowhere closer than where we were many years ago in engaging technology, science and technology for development. I want to teach you one concept from where I come from, just to express um, perhaps my view of where we have, uh, uh, what happened to us. And I don't want to, I want you to listen carefully because I don't want to hear that the new principle is full of expletives, especially in front of the, uh, of the, of the pastor here. But it is a, a, a term that is used very much at home to describe the phenomenon I'm going to explain to you but has nothing to do with what it might rhyme or seem uh, related to. Now, what has happened to us when it comes to science and technology is that we are stunned. Um, the Singaporeans came here to look at what we are doing, and when they went back, they did lots of things, and we are stunned. At home, Tanzania, we would say you have been hit by a bumbuazi, B-U-M-B-U-A-Z-I. When you are hit by this phenomenon, you are stunned. You can't do anything, you can't move, can't speak, can't really help yourself. You are simply stunned and you freeze. And to me, that, is, that seems to be very close to what has happened to us, in that we have not figured out how to um, uh, get some funding to begin doing things, uh, and so on and so forth. We complain, and we say, well, the Singaporeans have came here to see what we are doing. They copied what we are doing, and they are gone. Uh, they didn't even call us when they were going. Uh, but instead of doing that, we would like to see ourselves move a little bit closer, and therefore, the, to, to action, sorry, and therefore, the, 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 the whole business of teaching science and technology, of teaching all other types of knowledge using technology to ensure that um, everybody understands what's happening and where we are going uh, is, uh, uh, is extremely important. The um, guardian life is moving away out of this thing that I described to you. Uh, the UWI is moving away, and certainly uh, Dr. Yeard is moving away. Uh, from being stunned, from being hit by this thing, uh, to actually do something about the situation. And we would like the country, we'd like the region, we'd like developing countries to emulate that example, but we shall leave that discussion uh, for another time. 
Uh, today, we have um, an important lecture uh, that is before us, and would like to, I'd like to, uh, um, to, to, to wish you all the best in enjoying uh, this lecture, and also to uh, thank uh, Professor Yeod for agreeing to make uh, uh, this presentation. I want to make a suggestion. Um, uh, when I looked at the program, as it has been running for a few years, there has been five premium lectures. There has been 12 awardees. And each one of these could write a chapter. And we have 17 chapters uh, for a book. May I suggest that Guardian Life, the UWI, um, if we can put our minds together, we could produce a book that would, uh, that would record all these ideas, excellent ideas that have been put across uh, in this series um, into, uh, into a book that could be available to many others. Please enjoy uh, this evening's lecture. Thank you very much, Dr. Kawa. It gives me great pleasure to invite our next speaker to the podium. He's none other than my president, the president of Guardian Life Limited. He needs to recognize and remember that for the next hour or so, I am the boss. <laughs> so he has to fall in line and conform to my rules. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Eric Hosin. <laughs> Uh, and those are very tall rules to follow. <laughs> Protocol observed. Good evening. No, man. You know, um, in fact, this morning, Dr. Yearwood was saying to me, boy, he's so glad to be back in the Caribbean because a lot of places that he goes to is very stiff and quiet and everybody very proper. So he needs a little more oomph. So good evening. Good evening. All right, and the next thing you can do, I know some of you kind of came in late and so you're very quiet and you slipped in and you didn't even say good evening to the person beside you. So can you just turn to your friends and the person behind you and just tell them good evening and you know, welcome. You made a right choice of coming here to listen to, not Eric, but Dr. Yearwood. All right, now we've gotten the shine off the ball. Today marks a milestone in the partnership between Garden Life Limited and the University of the West Indies in staging the annual UWI Guardian Life Premium Teaching Lecture and Premium Teaching Award Series. For the past 10 years, we have joined forces with the UWI community to promote excellence in teaching and learning, to recognize many of the stalwarts in tertiary education, and to present lectures which are geared to excite. You heard that word, excite. Now, I can assure you, just from meeting this gentleman, I can, I won't say guarantee next thing you go, but I'm sure he's gonna excite you and bring innovation to teaching and learning on this campus. The entire Garden Life family welcomes our guest, special guest, Dr. David Yearwood, the professor and chair of the technology department at the University of North Dakota. Now, I don't know where a Caribbean man find himself in them cold place there, but <laughs> Dakota is not a, <laughs> He tells me that from October, it starts snowing and the snow continues and continues and continues and continues. <laughs> and we look forward to this lecture under the theme, Learn, Learner-Centered Perspective to Teaching and Learning with Technology, the 21st Century Difference. These lectures, my friend, which, which alternate yearly with the Premium Teaching Awards are critical, a critical part of Garden Life's corporate commitment to the development of education at the tertiary level. We are pleased that the lecture and award series continue to enhance the learning and teaching processes at UWI while recognizing the outstanding accomplishment of academic staff. We cherish this fruitful partnership with the university, which is strategically aligned to our corporate vision to support what is best in Jamaica through our contribution to the development of health education, sports, and community. 
The 2013 premium teaching lecture further cements the bond we share with the University of the West Indies, and we are optimistic that this year's lecture, which focuses on technology as a central plank for both teaching and learning in the 21st century, will have a positive impact. At Garden Life, our corporate logo and identity expressly defined who we are and signals our pivotal role to improve the lives of the Caribbean people. We believe in a, the advancement in education is one of the sure ways to boost the level of success of our clients and customers in particular, and our country in general. Jamaica must have all hands on deck in a very challenging and economic and social environment, and our team is acutely aware that we must meet the discerning needs of our clients and customers as they seek to live easy. Through our special relationship with the UWI, we are placing on record our unwavering commitment to the people of Jamaica and taking steps to improve their lives through our support of initiatives like these in education. Professor Yearwood, the Garden Life family welcomes you to Jamaica and look forward to a wonderful, wonderful lecture as we focus on how best to use technology to improve higher education. God's richest blessings to you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eric. You kept to your time, so we're, we're in good stead. Guardian Life and the university are true business partners, and we share a relationship that has been built on mutual trust and respect. Our next presenter is someone with whom I have worked closely, and someone whom I admire, not just for her dedication to duty, but also for her frankness while still maintaining a sense of diplomacy. Please help me welcome Dr. Camille Bell Hutchinson, campus registrar, who will bring greetings on behalf of the Vice Chancellor. Dr. Bell Hutchinson. Madam Chairperson, I must start by saying I was given no time limit. Uh, <laughs> but I don't want to spoil our friendship. <laughs> That's right. Madam Chairperson, Professor Ishin Kumba Kawa, our Deputy Principal, Mr. Eric Hassin, President, Guardian Life Limited. I think Mr. Glendon Gordon, Gluten Gordon, is he here? Yes, our Vice President, Individual Life for Guardian Life. Our, our very special guest speaker, Professor David Yearwood and Mrs. Yearwood, that I met, had the privilege of meeting this morning. Dr. Mervyn Chisholm, our director for the Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning here at the UWI Mona. Colleagues of the UWI and other tertiary institutions that might be here, and all our specially invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It certainly is an honor, a very, a very great honor to bring greetings to you on behalf of our Vice Chancellor, Professor Nigel Harris. Uh, who is regret regrettably absent. I think we had apologies for him. This is a season for graduation, and our graduation start this weekend for the open campus and for the next three weekends. And so our principal and our vice chancellor and all the pro-vice chancellors are all attending graduation and hence his absence this afternoon. He sends his good wishes for a very successful event, and we know that he is with us in spirit. It is even a greater pleasure for me to be here on his behalf because those who know me know that my first love is in fact teaching. I am a teacher at heart, I was a teacher, I am a teacher, I will always be a teach teacher and I will always love teaching. And so it is a particular pleasure for me to be here um, to bring greetings at this occasion. As many of you may know, the UWI is the oldest university in the English-speaking Caribbean, having started as a college of the University of London in 1948 and becoming a fully degree granting institution in 1962. We have moved from 33 students to well over 40,000 students in the last 65 years. With this kind of history and longevity in the Caribbean, it seems reasonable to expect that the UWI would see as one of its critical roles the need to lead the way in ensuring 
that the tertiary education landscape remains on the pulse of innovation and change with respect to ways of teaching that will lead to deep learning. Indeed, the UWI has already articulated its desire to have its graduates being critical thinkers, problem solvers, knowledgeable and informed individuals, and effective communicators. In order to achieve this, the Board for Undergraduate Studies pointed out in its 21st century manifesto that we must reinvent ourselves in order to confront this millennium equipped with the methods and values of the postmodern university. As such, it acknowledged that only a student-centered, and I would wish to have that saying, the learner-centered, and a student-friendly environment can get us there and ensure that we effectively serve the region in the years ahead. It is for this reason that I am most heartened at the theme for this year's premier teaching lecture, and even more delighted that this is being presented by an outstanding son of the Caribbean soil. Student-centeredness in all its facets is the way we must go. And with technology being the driver in the 21st century, the University of the West Indies must be positioned to use technology in ways which enable our students to gain maximum benefits, learning with understanding, and thus being able to contribute positively to their own professional and personal development and to the national and regional mandates today. The university thanks Guardian Life for their continued commitment to this lecture series and congratulates the Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning for its role in enabling this event. On behalf of the Vice Chancellor, Professor E. Nigel Harris, I warmly welcome Professor David Yearwood and look forward to what I know will be a most inspiring and thought-provoking lecture this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Camille Belhajan. As you will agree, ladies and gentlemen, that our speakers have been brief, yet informative, and they have held our attention. We're now gonna change the pace a bit. We're gonna rev it up with a musical interlude compliments of the UWI Panoridim Steel Orchestra. Please remain in your seats. <laughs> Thank you. 
realize they were going to be so quick. I sat there waiting for yet another one. Thank you very much. Please give them another round of applause. That was truly entertaining, and I'm sure we have been re-energized for round two. We're fast approaching the moment that we have all been awaiting, the highlight of the evening. So at this juncture, I'm going to ask Miss Meth Peterkin a member of the UWI GLL Premium Teaching Lecture Planning Committee to introduce our guest speaker. Madam Chair, Mrs. Alicia Foster, Deputy Principal of the UWI Mona Campus, Professor Ishing Kumba Kawa, I hope I got it, Campus Registrar, UWI Mona Campus, Dr. Camille Bell Hutchinson, President of Guardian Life Limited, Mr. Eric Hosin, our distinguished guest speaker, Dr. David Yearwood, and his lovely wife, Mrs. Joanne Yearwood, members of the executive council and management team of Guardian Life, heads of departments of the UE faculty and other tertiary institutions, other distinguished guests, friends, and corporate partners of UWI faculty, staff, and students, welcome and good evening. It is my distinct honor that I have been asked to introduce to you Dr. David Yearwood. I hope to provide for you a little bit more other than what has been provided in the short bio in the program. So come journey with me into the life and service of Dr. Yearwood, an ambitious task. Dr. David Yearwood holds a PhD in teaching and learning, a Master of Science and a Bachelor of Science in Industrial Technology, and an Associate of Applied Science in Electronic Systems Technology. He is professor and chair for the Department of Technology at the University of North Dakota. He teaches at both the graduate and undergraduate levels, and as a testimony to the fine teacher that he is, Dr. Yearwood has been the recipient of the University of North Dakota's Outstanding Teacher Award on three different occasions. He has also been recognized in the who's who among America's teachers and he has been recognized by the Association of Technology, Management and Applied Engineering, a national accrediting body as an outstanding professor in research, teaching, and service. His experience as a curriculum developer is vast. And just to highlight a few of those, he has developed two new graduate courses. They are assessment in higher education and technology in higher education. Dr. Yearwood has also created booklets for use in computer hardware training courses, as well as developed a computer interactive multimedia module on network computer operations. He currently reviews and revises curricular materials to enhance teaching and learning by integrating what is learned from empirical research and faculty development activities. Facilitating faculty development workshops at various, various colleges and universities, making keynote addresses at international conferences such as the Teaching Professor Annual Conference and facilitating online seminars are all part and parcel of the work Dr. Yearwood undertakes. One curious presentation he made to the faculty of Old Guard School of Aerospace and Sciences was entitled Lamentations of a Technologically Challenged Faculty. I wonder if we need such a presentation here at UWI. He has authored and co-authored several refereed journal articles, completed book reviews surrounding themes of adult learning, 
adult literacies, online learning, and multiple intelligences. A work in progress is a book of his own entitled 10 plus 2 Commandments for Using Popular Technologies in a Pedagogically Responsible Manner. And it would be quite irresponsible of me if I did not highlight his research work in teaching and learning. He has researched extensively on student-centered practices for teaching and learning and has a keen interest in the area of electronic pedagogy. That is the marrying of pedagogy with technology. Another research interest is internet usage in urban and rural areas and he has studied faculty comfort level use and perception of instructional technology in their classroom. Currently, one of his current research areas is involved in the in-depth development of a model exemplifying student-centered classroom practices, connection, engagement, and empowerment. Needless to say, Dr. Yearwood is passionate about teaching. He sees teaching as more than just a job. Rather, he sees it as his mission. According to a reliable technological source, a YouTube video, he, he lives for the aha moments of seeing students become transformed by the teaching learning experience. He also believes in giving back something and not just merely being on the receiving end. In light of this philosophy, he has cycled, um, this is bicycling, <laughs> not a motorbike, just in case we're trying to picture that one, and he really loves doing this. He cycled over 200 miles to help raise funds for two young boys who had brain cancer. His generosity does not stop there, as he and his wife, Joanne, are co-founders of the Joel and Randolph Yearwood Education Technology Foundation. The goal of the foundation, which was formed in honor of his parents, is to, and I quote Dr. Yearwood from a feature on the university's website, Nor University of North Dakota, the purpose of the foundation is to help increase the availability and educational opportunities for those who lack sufficient modern electronic tools with the hope that these tools can be used to provide access to 21st century technologies. To the credit of the foundation, a shipment of over 600 computers is being prepared for St. Vincent and the Grenadines from where he hails. In fact, he's exploring a similar undertaking for Jamaica. And by faith, the substance of things hoped for, we thank him in advance for that. So Dr. David Yearwood comes to us with years of experience under his technological belt. He has a passion for teaching and learning and a heart for helping others. Who better to bring this evening's UA Garden Life Premium Teaching Lecture, a learner-centered perspective to teaching and learning with technology, the 21st century difference, none other than Dr. David Yearwood. Please help me make him welcome. Mom would be happy, and Dad would be happy to hear that. And I am um, thinking, are they talking about my twin brother here? Uh, <laughs> Madam Chairwoman, Chairwoman um, all of the distinguished guests, Mr. Hosen, for your support of activities like this for faculty, because it's really important that we have those kinds of connections and relationships, because it, it, it's, we have to work with students to get them to the point where they can go out and work with companies such as yours. And we need to make certain that they understand exactly what that job entails. We need to understand that so we can better prepare them for it. Now, I have to tell you that um, the bar is really up there for me in terms of what I have to do this evening, and I'm gonna try to live up to it. Uh, a couple of ground rules. Number one, I don't, I hate standing behind this thing. So I'm not gonna be behind there too often I'll try to remember to use the mic because uh, you need to get that. Um, I also move around and I do have interactive sort of lectures. So here is how this would work a little bit. Uh, at some point, I'm going to seek interaction, your interaction. And generally when a presenter or faculty asks or puts a question out there on the floor, pretty much what happens is that um, the person suddenly becomes engaged in something else. 
and they don't make eye contact. And so I know how to get down there. <laughs> and, I, and, and I really truly want this to be a fun activity. Um, I think to some extent sometimes we've taken some of the fun out of education. So I'm going to work to try to put some of that fun back in. And hopefully uh, we would have an enjoyable, informative educational kind of opportunity time to have questions answered relative to some of the work that I do. I need to clear up one thing first though. How much time, what is my time limit in my room? And so I should be stopping somewhere here about 45 minutes. Okay. Got it. Okay. I'm just looking at my watch here. Okay. Uh, I don't know that I, I don't know everybody's name. And I apologize for some of the very distinguished guests in front here. Uh, Deputy Principal, uh, Registrar, Dr. Chisholm for working with you and for the opportunity to work with this group as well. And then other distinguished guests, faculty, um, staff, students. Uh, let me just get a couple of things set up here. So if you give me one minute just to get some of this straightened out. I should point out that I normally put up, um, it's kind of interesting here in that I normally have to supply the music. So when I do presentations, I normally have some little musical interlude, and it's fairly quiet and nice, easy going. And then right before I speak, I kind of ramp that up. And so the band, the steel band group here did an awesome job, but I don't know why it should be okay for them to be the one to be dancing and we were sitting still. That's not fair. Welcome aboard. It's 2007 and we are more committed to your safety than ever. And that's why we'd like you to pay careful attention to this important safety information. First, please make sure that your seatbelt is securely fastened. Seatbelts can be purchased for $5. <laughs> to fasten, insert the metal fitting into the buckle and tighten the buckle by pulling the loose end away from you. To release, Purchase a release flap for $7. <laughs> now I know what you're thinking. We've never paid for seatbelts before. Once we've reached our cruising altitude, your flight attendant may or may not go down the aisle with snacks. If she chooses to, each passenger will be given a single peanut. <laughs> Lavatories are located at the front and the rear of the airport. Please take a moment to look at your safety pamphlet. The charge for looking at this pamphlet is $3. The charge for looking at this pamphlet and putting it back quickly is $4. Should there be a rapid change in cabin pressure, oxygen masks will automatically drop from the compartment above your seat, free of charge. Place the mask over your nose and mouth. And to start the flow of oxygen, pay your flight attendant $75.63. <laughs> <laughs> As always, exact change is appreciated. Now I know that some of you are still concerned about getting there safely. Enjoy your flight. This is what it was like for me coming to Jamaica. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I probably have too many things here. Normally I have a lapel mic, so I don't know. I'm going to try to see if I could make this work. Because I move around a little bit too much. Just briefly a little bit of what I do and what I like. Uh, yes, I do live in North Dakota, and yes, it's tough up there in terms of the weather. I'm an outdoors person. I refuse to stay inside, so these are some of the activities. And um, all of those crazy bikes, yes, I do ride them. <laughs> My wife was not too happy taking a photo with 20-something uh, degrees below zero. Um, and so I have to acknowledge said something this morning that was rather interesting. She said, um, we don't normally have spouses coming, you know, but behind every so-called successful person uh, is a spouse, a significant other. And so, <laughs> <laughs> this is our working agenda. And essentially, the question I want to pose to you is, uh, I want you to consider what changes are necessary in the 21st century, in 21st century education because I think changes really have to occur for good reason. And we'll get into some of these in just a little bit, but 
three main things that I'm going to focus on and talk about, and then I'm going to come full circle back to looking at that question that I posed to you relative to the changes that we may have to make in education. I put this up here because I want you to look at and think about this teacher-centered, uh, learner-centered paradigm. And I'm going to just step out of the way for you to see that. I'll share the work of some of the people who suggest ways in which we should be teaching. And this is something that I do frequently. Uh, it's not going to work. And, um, what I'm trying to do is hit two buttons simultaneously to blank in the screen. Uh, Richard Meyer talks about this whole notion of visual and textual and audiovisual content. And so frequently, when presenters put something up there, guess what the audience does? Start reading. And pretty much, it does not matter what the presenter says. You don't hear it. Or you alternatively have what is called as cognitive overload. And in essence, you have something taking place up there and something taking place down here, and you have divided attention. And we're gonna talk about some aspects of why that's not a good thing to do and how we manage the technology to avoid those kinds of issues. Uh, let's look forward, move forward here a bit and look at some of the instructional methodologies, which I'm certain a number of you are familiar with. Uh, because indeed, we have used a lot of these at one time or another. The problem is that I think sometimes we have a focus on one or more of these pedagogical techniques. And then even worse, sometimes we use that one all the time. So for instance, you have situations where students will say, for instance, students will say things like, um, I didn't know that every class was a PowerPoint class. Or I didn't know that every class was going to be a lecture where the faculty basically did all of the talk and the students did very little interaction. And so we're gonna talk about how to change some aspects of that and I'll show you some actual examples that I use in some of the research that I've studied where I look at how these influence teaching and learning. I wanted to take a look at this and I apologize for some of the, the color schemes What you're looking at is probably something you're very familiar with already, retention rates. So the first question goes to you, ma'am. Oh, and you do have an option here. You can say pass, and you have to pick someone to pass to, but you can't pass the second time. So the question here is, if this is indeed what the retention rate represents, then how should faculty be teaching? Oh, and I didn't tell you, um, I do have a gift if you answer question correctly. <laughs> oh, you can pick or you can answer, or you can pass rather. Yeah, what is this really saying, generally, anybody? What is this saying about? Right, they remember 5% of lectures. And therefore, if that is the case, then how should we approach teaching and learning? Less lecturing, more what? More practice by doing. So we need to change the classroom dynamics such that it takes into account the ways in which students remember things. Do we give her a pen, by the way? I think this gentleman was asking and answering a lot of it over here. Oh, he is, so that's why. room environment uh, looks almost like this. And I want to
and students, I think you get it. And if you've gone to school, and most of you, all of you pretty much have, and you've graduated, you see some of this. And the sad part of this is that that's what's happening yet today in some of our classrooms. And I really don't call that teaching and learning. I call it more preaching than anything else, right? And it's not that preaching is bad, but what bothers me a little bit is that I don't think we're using the tools that are available to us to challenge students, to take a more active role in their education, to actually work to enhance our work with students. And so what ends up happening sometimes is we have this thing called PowerPoint, and PowerPoint has become nothing more than the glorified projector. You know, we use it in a very similar way to reinforce some of the same old routines that existed for so long ago. And we really need to change that. So sometimes when we point the finger at students and we say, they're not doing the work. There's three of these things that are pointing back at us. And the question has to become, what are we doing to help them understand that content and make connections between the various parts of whatever it is that they're pursuing, they're studying. We have to work. This thing called teaching and learning is a collaborative sort of an activity. Education is not a spectator sport. And to some extent, that's almost what we have made it. A passive sort of an environment where we do all of the talking and pretty much all of the learning and students are not getting as much opportunities to learn as they should. There are a lot of phrase I'm phrases I'm going to throw out at you. And I want you to think about them, not because they're cliche sort of phrases. He or she who talks the most learns the most. Seems obvious, seems not so obvious. Bear with me here a little bit. If you have to teach someone something, right? How much time is involved in preparing to teach that? A lot. And you go through a lot of gyrations in terms of, should I do this, shouldn't I do that? And would I, should I include this? Should I not include this? How would I present this so that it's understood? Right? What you don't realize is that as you go through those kinds of activities, mental and physical, you're actually learning an awful lot. 